Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to see how we can get our projects and our events that are currently running depending on a date range that we set in Power Apps. So if the project is in any way between the time range, then we want to see it. How can we do this? Let's check it out. So I have my data in a SharePoint site. I have two different lists, projects and events. And on each of those lists, I have a start date and an end date. So here I have five items, so five projects. And if I go into events, I have six different events with six different start and end dates. Let's switch to Power Apps. And if we go into the data sources, I've added my projects and my events list. And now what we're going to do is create a collection. I'm going to create that collection uh, on the on start of the app simply because for demo purposes, but you could create that collection using the clear collect directly when the screen is visible. If for example, you have a multi-screen app, but that's not the case for today. So we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to go into app and I'm going to create my collection. Now I'm going to click on the three dots, run on start. So the collection is populated. And if I look at the collection, expand. Now I have all my data in here. Next, I'm going to add two dead pickers in the canvas. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to use the modern controls. Now the date picker is still in preview, but Again, I haven't seen any issues with it. So that's what we're going to use for today. I'm going to rename my control. This one would be the start date. And I'm going to create another one. And this one is going to be the end date. I'm also going to add a gallery going to go back to classic, a vertical gallery, so we can see our events or projects. I'm only going to choose the title, that's all we need for now, and we don't need the arrow. And I'm also going to rename my gallery. And for good measure, we're just going to set a selected date. The start date is going to be today. And then for the end date, what I like to do is actually take the start date and just add a few days into it instead of just saying two day plus so many days. So it's always referencing the start date. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go there, select a date. And it's going to be this selected date. And let's add seven days, for example. Now let's go back to the gallery and for the items, we are going to use the filter function. So filter and we want to filter our collection that we just created. And now we need to think about what we want to get into that gallery. If we go back into SharePoint and let's take the example of an event. It's the same for projects anyway. What we actually want to do here is any events that would be between the start date and the end date that we have in Power Apps should show up in the gallery. Okay. So that doesn't mean that the start date and the end date in SharePoint should match exactly as a value the dates that we've selected in Power Apps. For example, in Power Apps, if I select from the 1st of January until the 15th of January, it doesn't mean that my event would need to have a start date of the 1st or an end date of the 15th. I want everything from a project or an event perspective that is starting or ending between the dates that I've selected in Power Apps. 
Let's go back to Power Apps. It's all going to make sense in a second. I would want my start date. This is the name of the column in SharePoint is greater or equal to the date picker start date selected date. I'm going to put that between parentheses. And again, the start date, but this time is less or equal to the date picker end date. And that means that the start date that I have in SharePoint for projects or events, if it's before the date I've selected in Power Apps or after the date I've selected for the end date, show me that item in the gallery. So that's one step. Now we need to do the same for the end date. So I'm just going to copy that. It's going to be an OR operator. And I'm going to change here. This is going to be the end date. And here it's going to be the end date as well. That's the only thing I have changed in here. The date pickers, they stay the same. And then we have a final scenario, which is basically when the start date in SharePoint is actually before the start date from the date picker, which is the opposite of what I have here. This one is less than the end date, but now we need to add less than the start date. Let's add another condition. And this time I'm going to need a start date, which is less or equal to the start date from the date picker. And the same is happening for the end date. This time it's going to be less than the end, which is different from the one we have above in here. So less or equal than the end date. Need a parenthesis in here, forgot. Now let's fix the issue, which is just grabbing the title. And we can see already we have a result. Let's check out this result, which is project number three. Let's see why we have this. So the start date is today, January 20th, and the end date is January 27. So let's go back to SharePoint, go into projects. And we had project number three, where the start date is the 1st of January until the 4th of February. I'm in the UK, so this is the format, which is day, month, year. And the result is actually correct because this project runs during my time range. And that's what we wanted. Let's choose another date. And we are going to say between the 1st of January until the 31st of January. And we have project one, two, three, and the bus tour. So project one, the start date is between my range. Project number two is the same. Number three is the same. Despite the end date being next month, it is still running during the time range I've selected. And then we had the bus tour. If we go into events and yes, it is between the range. Let's try a couple of more dates. We're going to choose the 15th of January and we're going to go into next month. So let's say the second, for example. So this time we have project one, two, three, five, and the bus tour again. So the bus tour, we already have a start date on the 16th. So we're definitely in the range. And for the projects, they are all within the range. Now let's try just a single date and we're going to go another month. Let's try the 29th, April 29th. And this time we only have one results, which is in the events. And indeed during the 29th of April, we only have one item in SharePoint and that is the course. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, comment below that will help the channel and I will see you in the next one.